Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and this is going to be a first of probably like a series of videos where I'm attempting to create a matter enabled devices using a zero code environment and using DIY hardware. So what you can see here is I have an ESP32C3 Supermicro, which is a very small development board that you can see here. That, that's it. So that's the guy. And it is connected to a relay module that you can see here. And uh, it is running a code which I have created without doing zero coding at all. So basically just menus going through. And it had created a matter enabled device. So this is now added to my Google Home. And as you can see here, it is, um, well, you can see it is matter enabled. So that's, the, that's a matter device. So these projects are going to be ideal if you don't have a, you know, a fancy home automation system, if you don't have home assistant or you don't have any other hubs, but you have an Alexa or you have a Google or you have an Apple ecosystem because all of them support matter. So you can just create a DIY device for actually very little money and also very little time and you can add you know new devices to your arsenal so maybe you have a special requirement you need a dry contact like this one or you need to you know power low power the uh, devices or for example you want to run it from battery and i don't think that you can find matter enabled device with these specifics easy on the market or at least i haven't seen so we should be able to uh, create them so in this video, I'm going to do a very simple project. So I'm going to, well, as you can see, I'm going to create a single channel device or a single channel plug, basically. And uh, so we are going to use the ESP to run the code and then, you know, connect to the better uh, enabled network. In my case, it's a Google Nest Hub. And we are just going to create a, a driver relay. Well. I don't have a single channel relay. This is why I use a dual relay, but I'm only using one of the relays. And what you get is a device that you can turn on and off from your phone. And of course you can create automations and scenes and logics and everything. Uh, you get a relay that you can connect to, you know, uh, mains voltage or low voltage or whatever. You also get a status LED here. You can see the blue LED. And also we can use one of the buttons. Oops, it's very small. So we can use one of the buttons to control this device locally. And uh, for some reason, the update is a bit slow for me, but you can see that I'm pushing the button here and then the status eventually updates on the phone as well. So yeah, it's easy to do. It doesn't cost you a lot to do. And uh, hopefully there are going to be a lot of other projects that I can build with this whole ecosystem. Okay, so first of all, uh, let me change the view and what I'm going to use, what I'm going to show you is how to do this with this uh, ESP zero code environment or the expressive zero code. So expressive is the company behind the ESPs and uh, especially now we have the ESP 32s and um, this environment will uh, allow you to easily create matter enabled projects. I think there are some other options as well. You can also create Zigbee projects, but I wanted to focus on matter because that's the new stuff. And for this, I have purchased a new ESP. Well, that's, that's the ESP32 I'm using. So this is an ESP32 C3 Super Mini. And as you can see, that's how much I paid for it. If you look around in AliExpress, there were cheaper options as well. Uh, but uh, I ordered it from DIY Victor just because they had another development board as well, which is a slightly bigger one. So that's what I'm going to use in future projects. So I could just uh, combine both of them uh, and then get free shipping when I ordered more than... Uh, you know, the value of uh, 10 USD. So this uh, super mini one was 377. This bigger one was 367. Yeah, the price varies a lot. And then once you have done that, all you have to do is come here to zerocode.expressive.com and you have to create an account for yourself. So let me just resize the screen so we can see the whole thing. Yeah, that's pretty much about it. And once you log in, and uh, I just use my Google account to log in. Then you can create products. So I have a couple of uh, these uh, products that I created for the demo. And uh, yeah, I can delete this. I don't need it. And I can delete this one as well, yeah. 
uh, and of course you can go back to any of your existing projects so what this environment is allow is going to allow you is to create a project and use a like a visa type user interface to configure you know where if you want like a relay project or a plug or a light or something else and then just configure that okay my relay is connected to this pin and then it would automatically generate the code and upload it to the esp so it is almost like the esp home but with this you can create method enabled devices and you can just use it with any matter supported uh, system like i said alexa google or apple so let me recreate this project that i showed you in the beginning of the video so i'm just going to click on create projects and uh, i'm just going to call it demo video and so first thing is that you have to specify what type of projects you want to create so as you can see there are a couple of different stuff which is supported here and um, I mean, it's basically, well, from the top, you can see blinds, dimmers, you know, air conditioner, laundry washer, lights, plugs, refrigerator, sockets, or thermostats. And there are a couple of different things like, you know, you can create projects that support AWS, IoT, Express Link, Matter, Amazon, ACK. To be honest, I don't really know what these are. And, and even from... A same project like light fixture you can create a lot of different ones depending on how you're going to drive your leds if you're using a special driver or i think there is one here which uh, is like pwm so if you want a simple you know led light with pwm driver you can use this uh, project as well or if you want to drive a small led strip then you can use this as well so yeah there is a lot of possibilities so the first thing that i want to use is a plug and we are going to use one of the outputs on the ESP to drive the relay. So I'm going to select this one, which says plug and the indicator is GPIO. And this is a matter enabled project. So I'm going to select that and then go to the next page of the configuration. So now we can select the device which is supported by this environment. And uh, well, uh, I have the C3 and i also have the c2 which i'm going to use for other projects and you can see that this uh you know supports a matter over wi-fi and bluetooth if you select the h2 then it supports zigbee as well so it can work as a thread uh, device so matter over thread and you can see there are a couple of other options here so i'm going to select the c3 and here i can also select a different um, uh, chipsets or boards or board types so you can see like, you know, boards that are usually, um, you know, shipped with a finer product, but I'm going to select the uh, ESP32 C3 dev kit. It's not exactly the same layout as mine because I have the super mini, which means that we just can, we can only use fewer number of pins, but otherwise it's compatible. Okay, so we go next. And now we get to a very simple page where it shows the general layout of this project. So you have the microcontroller and then you have an input button, you have an output for a relay and you also have an output for an indicator light. And this is what we need to configure. And by the way, there is an advanced text mode here, which I will come to in a future video because I want to explore all the additional functions that are or uh, via features which are available here. But let's just stick with a graphical mode because that's the easiest option. So a button and in order to specify this, I found this uh, schematic for this uh, C3 mini development board and if I zoom in here you can see that we have a uh, chip enable uh, button here and we also have a boot button which is connected to GPIO 9. So I think I'm going to use that so that's the button that I pressed in the beginning of the video so it's uh, sorry it's this one right here yep the left well sorry the right one so I'm going to use that. So that's GPIO 9. So if I go back here, so the input button is GPIO 9 and it is uh, not active high because as you can see from the diagram, it is connected to ground when it's uh, pressed. So it is active low. Okay, so the output relay, uh, the default is GPIO 10. I'm going to leave that. And also if you see this other diagram, then you can see that these are the different pins that we can use. So GPIO 10 is here um, on the on this side. So well, for me, it's the, going to be the other side. But GPIO 10 is fine. And for the LED, uh, we are going to use GPIO 8. And again, in the schematics, you can see this LED, which is connected to GPIO 8. 
and it's connected to so it will we need to be pulled uh, to ground in order to light up so again that's active low so the active high is no and uh, and that's it basically yeah and you have some you know summary here nothing really interesting i mean just standard documentation sort of stuff and a summary uh, so that's actually the summary of your configuration and we can do next step so it probably took us like two minutes or even less with me talking through it. So now what you can do is, uh, well, the project is pretty much complete. So what you can do now is you can um, uh, test it in the ESP launchpad or you can download the generated firmware and you can flash it uh, yourself or just you know come back to this project later so if you plan to create a lot of these you know many many copies of this project you can download the generated firmware and you can use the esp uh, tool to upload it to an esp there is a documentation how it's done but i haven't really spent much time on it because in most cases i'm creating one-off projects and in order to create a one-off projects i think it's just easier if we go into the uh, this esp launchpad so evaluate it now so we click there so that's basically going to connect to your our ESP and it's going to flash it with the firmware that we have configured. So it's again almost like how you do it in ESP Home um, with Home Assistant where you, you know, configure your YAML file and then it flashes the ESP which is connected to the device. Okay, you get a message that it, uh, so it uses some plugins which is already supported with, uh, by Chrome at the moment. You can download some extensions if you want to use uh, Safari or Firefox but I'm using Chrome, so I don't really have to do anything. So what I'm going to do now is uh, this project is already working. So I think I'm going to use a second one, which I have here um, to show you how this flashing is done. So this is another, oops, sorry, uh, of this device. You can see the, the pins and everything. So you have pin headers here that you can solder to. There is nothing on the other side, so you can solder it directly on a PCB as well. Well, maybe not because of these pin pads. But anyway, yeah, that's the ESP. So this is connected now. Okay, so I'm switching back here now and uh, I can connect to, well, click on connect device. So uh, COM4, uh, COM port four is my mouse. So it's COM13, which is the ESP. And I click on connect. And now we just have to sit back and wait because there's nothing that we need to do. It takes um, a bit of a time to erase the flash, probably like 30 seconds, but after that it will start uploading the sketch. And uh, so you can do this as many times as you want. You can go back to the project, reflash it. Um, sometimes I notice that even if I refresh the, reflash the project, it doesn't go into pairing mode, uh, but pff, yeah. I mean, you can play around with that. Um, so now it has flashed the ESP firmware and actually the ESP32 is now running. If I switch back to the camera again, what you see is that the, well, the blue LED is blinking. So it's already in pairing mode. And if I go back here and if I scroll a little bit down, you can see the matter logo here or the matter QR code that you need to scan with your phone if you want to pair it. And uh, probably a good idea if everything is working, just you know save this QR code because if you want to use the device again in the future, you will certainly need to, uh, well, you need to have that. Okay, so this is my Google Home again running. So I'm going to add a new device, a matter enabled device, and let's scan the QR code and then agree. And now we are going to add this new device to my our Meta network. And you see a bunch of messages appearing here. Um, not that I understand any of these, but um, yeah, we just have to wait until this completes. So up here in the documentation, it says actually that now this um, a launch pad is going to create a test certificate. It says here it's still visible on the screen. So I got a message that uh, this is an uncertified device and it asked me whether I want to install it or not. But well, this is my device. I just did it, so I trust it. So I click on setup anyway, and it will just complete the setup process. And again, it's a little bit more time for this to complete. Maybe it's going to be click, uh, quicker in Alexa or, or Apple HomeKit, but uh, 
it usually takes me that that much amount of time in uh, uh, Google Home, uh, regardless if this is something like a DIY or uh, it's a commercially available Meta product. Okay, and it says device is connected. So I click on done. And I need to specify the, the uh, room and I'm just going to give it a name. So I think I'm just going to video demo. That's going to be the name of this device and next. Okay, bunch of more messages on the screen. And we have a new device. So this is the zero project one, which I uh, disconnected. And that's the demo video. And you can see that whenever I press the button, this thing here changes. Um, <clears throat> so messages are going back and forth. And actually, let me change the view again. So where is the device? Yeah, so if I turn it on and off, then you can see that the LED changes as well. So, I mean, even though there is no relay connected to it, I can already demo you that this is working fine. And to be honest, that's it. So now you have a new device. Uh, it took me like probably five minutes to get this up and running. And of course, if you want to build another one of these, then you can just flash that same firmware from the ESP Launchpad to here. And now I can go into settings, you know, if I want to change this because this is going to be connected to a fan, I can change the icon so I get a different um, um, icon for that. Yeah, video demo fan. And uh, yeah, but that's it. There is one more thing which I almost forgot. So once you are in the launch pad, uh, then you can go to the next step, which is customize and review. So this is the page which I haven't used because again, I'm creating one of the DIY projects. But if you want to you know, create a proper commercially available projects that you are going to sell, you can create, well, you can go to the next step here. So as you can see, you can uh, um, you know, buy additional three year security updates and you can go, you can uh, also purchase additional certifications. Uh, so you can put these badges onto your product. And uh, even at the next step, you can place an order for samples or go for mass production. So if you have you know, created something you know, maybe you have created a PCB for it. You use, uh, you pick the uh, an ESP that you want to use. You did the whole demo. You tried it. You prototyped it. Now you can, you know, create um, an order with Expressive uh, to get a bunch of these ESPs. I assume prefreshed with this uh, particular firmware, and you can start selling your product. So they are really making it easy to, you know, get onto the marketplace and create a, a new product that you can sell uh, to the mass market. I just love the fact that it is so easy to do for a simple projects. Actually, the next project idea that I have in mind is to create a metal enabled garage door opener, because to be honest, I have seen plugs, I have seen switches, lights and everything, but I haven't seen devices which has the type of zero, sorry, dry contact like a relay can offer, which is usually how you operate garage doors. So that's the next project idea that I have in mind. And for that, I definitely need to figure out if I can configure the output to be on only for a short period of time. So it just only sends an impulse instead of uh, switching on and off. And I'm hoping that with that, you know, beat option with the text input, I can add some additional functionality there. Uh, but that's definitely going to be in a future video. So I think that should be all for today. If you are interested in any of these, I'm going to leave links to well, the zero code uh, project in the video description. Also, I'm going to leave the link to this uh, S3, uh, so ESP module that I purchased for this project in the description. But I think that's going to be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video.